Hey, it's Gary Brown from TUG. I want to welcome you to the FOCUS webinar today. Today's webinar will be presented by Jason Birch and Andrea Hillary. You can see their pictures there. We are good to go, so Jason, take it away. Um, hi, everyone. Um, this is Andrea Hillary speaking. Um, welcome to our webinar. Today, Jason and I are going to um, cover how to combine your Infor, CRM, and rebates data in FOCUS, and why being able to see all of this information is beneficial to your business. But most importantly, we'll let you see how it works for yourself, so we'll get started. First and foremost, let's talk about data and the data analytics in the distribution industry. With more data at our fingertips these days, you might not be surprised to find out that more distributors like you are leveraging data analytics to make sense of all the information we have. One easy way to do this is data analytics software, since it helps present your data in an easy-to-understand format. This is important because the more easily you can understand your data, the easier it is to make decisions around your business. And because we've been saying phrases like you understanding your data and you making decisions around your business, we want to emphasize that it's about you, the user. When you and everyone else in your business have access to accurate data in an easily digestible format, the need for specialists like data scientists becomes reduced or eliminated. This helps with faster, more informed decisions since some of the silos and bottlenecks are reduced. With this being said, you need to have the right solution to look at your data and understand it. So having a few key features in a data analytics solution can lead to your success. First, it needs to be intelligent and intuitive to let you look at your data in your way. What we mean by that is the software should work as quickly as you can think. As you explore it by selecting different dimensions like sales rep, territory, product, or add measures like quantity, profit margin, or change the date range, you can slice and dice with instant results. It should also be designed with specific industry knowledge. In this case, it needs to be built for distribu distribution businesses like yours. It can anticipate the challenges you might commonly experience, such as having an accurate view into inventory and helping track your rebates, or know what dashboards will bring your business successes and pain points to life. But most importantly, it should help you bring the multiple data sources from your business together. You might be asking yourself, what do you mean by multiple data sources, and why is this so important? Well, since we've talked about getting data into the hands of more users like you, and making sure that you can use it for your business, the key is that first, you're actually looking at all of your data at the same time. For instance, if your Infor system is telling you that six products have sold out over the course of a week, you might quickly assume that your customers need those six products more, and therefore you should order more. But what you might not be seeing is these products sold because you are running a special promotion on your website that might have discounted just three of these products, but led to the customers wanting to purchase the other three. Not having all of this information at the ready might lead to an incorrect stock turn statistic, or dead stock down the road if you do order too many of these products. And once you're able to see all of your data in one place, it becomes the single source of truth in your organization. Using the same example, looking at your Infor and website data at once can help you and your team see the full picture. That way, if there are specific questions that come up around the website promotion or the sudden change in inventory levels, you can quickly pull up this information and look at it together as a team. And what this can then lead to is what's important to business strategy, identifying trends and patterns in your business. Comparing these two data sources, for instance, might show you that running a special on your website can help move inventory more quickly, or that it incentivizes customers to buy more products overall. How might this lead to a decision down the road with your business? Would you consider running more specials on your website to move specific parts of inventory? Are you finding that, regardless of specials run on your website, the same inventory item is moving just as quickly or slowly? Perhaps these questions help you reevaluate your product mix to help you align as accurately as possible with your customers' needs. So now it's time to bring what we've been talking about to life and how asking these questions and more can lead to business-changing insights. So Jason, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so what we're going to do today is we're going to do a, a very uh, whistle-stop tour through uh, what Focus can do for info customers. Um, we're going to do that all from within Focus itself. Um, so I've just switched out of my PowerPoint presentation, and I'm actually going to do everything now within Focus. So first of all, you should get a feel for how um, uh, powerful it is, how flexible it is. Um, you can do everything from analyzing to presenting to um, 
to training within one uh, medium. So what you're seeing on screen now is focus. It's my homepage. Um, it's running, if I just pop this up, it's running in a web browser, um, which means that everything that happens within focus can be taken anywhere you go um, with you. Um, so what does focus do? What, for those of you who've never seen focus, a quick rundown of the, the features that make, makes focus so powerful. Um, primarily, focus is a data analytics tool. So data analytics is um, looking at information within your business, allowing you to slice and dice, as Andrea said, following a train of thought through the data, looking for trends, looking for behavior patterns, um, and then enabling you to make um, timely and accurate decisions based upon that data. So data analytics is getting at the information um, and throwing it around. Uh, we can also do those more standard reporting, things like uh, lots of companies want to look at financial statements, or a profit and loss, or a cash flow, um, more traditional style reports. Uh, folks can do that as well. Uh, we can also do dashboarding, which allows uh, you to pre present your end users within the business with overviews of what's happening, whether it's a, a branch scorecard, a, a sales rep's homepage, um, or whether it's a particular product scorecard for a, an item. Dashboards give you the ability to summarize information in an easy to digest format. Um, focus comes with easy integration. So whether it's uh, one of your ERP systems, so your, your info ERP system like SXE or, or FAX, uh, or whether it's uh, another system entirely, a telephone uh, switch, a, a CRM tool, uh, your website, even Excel spreadsheets. Easy integration through um, Focus Sync and Focus Database Designer allow you to bring any set of data uh, to life and, and put it in the hands of your end users. As I mentioned earlier, Focus runs in a web browser, which means it's fantastically um, uh, flexible in where you can use it. So here, um, we're looking at it on my laptop, but I could just as easily open this same page and look at it on my mobile. Um, I could look at it on a, a tablet, which means I can take this data wherever I go if I'm visiting a, a customer, uh, meeting with a supplier, this data is at my fingertips. Um, we've also added, in the last year or so, the ability to collaborate. Um, so data is is useful and important, but um, what's more important is the actions and the conversations that happen off the back of that data. Uh, so Focus is built into it now, uh, the ability to have backwards and forwards conversations between users around a dashboard or a favorite or, or, or a report. Uh, so you can actually comment on what's going on, put explanations in there, and, and so on. Um, one thing that lots of analysis tools, um, especially dashboarding tools, will focus on will be that overview, that top level uh, information, that, those KPIs. Um, and that's definitely very useful information. That's definitely a great starting point. Um, but what's often um, key to getting a, a return on investment and really actioning uh, what you see in those KPIs and those dashboards is being able to drill down into the underlying data. Uh, and Focus does that um, as part and parcel of the, the product. So the ability to drill down, whether it's from a dashboard to the underlying um, grid of data showing or whether it's drilling down from that more granular data into the actual transactions that sit behind and looking at individual invoices, invoice lines. Focus enables an end user to do that without ever having to leave uh, the focus interface. Uh, lastly, Focus offers geospatial analysis. So you can look at where things are happening, not just what's happening. So if you wanted to look at um, penetration into a particular zip code and how well you sell a particular product line in a particular zip code, uh, you can plot everything on a, on a map as well. So those are focus features. Um, how does focus work? Um, focus can point, as we've said, we, we've touched on this point a few times already, it can connect to any data source, and that's what we're going to really show today. Uh, you can connect to anything, whether it's Info, whether it's Salesforce, an ODBC um, data source, Excel, um, even other focus solutions like Focus Rebate. Uh, all of those sets of data can be connected to, um, updated on a scheduled basis, so refreshing that data on a recurring basis to a, uh, a data warehouse. Um, and then in that data warehouse, you have a tool called the Database Designer, which allows you to either leverage the existing um, industry solutions straight out of the box. So it may well be um, for an SXE custom, for example, you would use our out-of-the-box dashboards and favorites sales database, inventory database, purchasing, and so on. But you may also 
uh, do some customization of those existing out of the box solutions, and even build your own solutions and bring in your own data sets um, to, to make the, the solution really match your business. Uh, what then happens is via a layer of user, user security, which, which allows you to restrict what people can see and do, you're going to share that data with your end users um, and they can analyze or, or, or visualize. Uh, what we're seeing here is more the visualization side of things, the, the graphs and the charts and dashboards, um, but you can also share the, the underlying data as well. So that's how focus works. What we're going to do now is, is take a look at focus itself. So I'm still within my home page. I've just scrolled down to take a look at um, an income statement. So this is one of those reports that we talked about earlier on, the more traditional style reports. So here what we're seeing is the international accounting standards layout for, for um, a profit and loss or an income statement. Um, and I can see my revenue and cost of sales and operating expenses. And I can actually see here my, my current performance, my actuals, compared to my budget. And my budget flowing in from an Excel spreadsheet. So straight away we're starting to see not only the, the ability to do reports, but the ability to combine data. So this budget information is coming from an Excel spreadsheet. I can see how I'm performing, and I can see uh, pretty positive. I, I'm 23% ahead of budget in terms of uh, sales revenue, which is great. I'm actually a bit higher on my cost of sales than I expected to be, so um, may need to know more about that. Um, and that's resulted in a, a, a lower than expected gross profit margin. So if I want to know more, um, I can dive in. So I can actually say, well, let me look at a breakdown of my revenue by uh, whether it's direct or indirect or sundry. I can even dive into the, that, those direct sales and see how they're comparing um, to targets. Um, the cost of sales is actually the one where I'm more concerned. I want to see where, where I'm up. So I, I didn't pay as much commission as I expected to, but um, I am actually seeing an awful lot more cost of sales, um, both direct and indirect, than I expected to. Now, that could just be down to the product mix that we're selling. Um, it could be um, that we've been squeezed by our vendors um, on pricing. We, went, um, we didn't take that into account when we did our budget. Um, it could also be, though, and I know lots of distribution companies have this. It may also be because there are rebates that are, are paid. Um, so you, you make a, a lower margin, apparently a gross margin, uh, at point of sale, but off the back end, you actually get some rebates from your, your vendors and pricing support. Now that's actually not showing up as a cost of sale, it's actually showing up as other revenue, the way we're accounting in this particular system. So I'm going to dive in there and see if we've got some rebates, and we do. Okay, so my rebates are at 146,000, um, we budgeted for 346, so we're actually down on what we expected, um, but that $146,000 that we've got helps offset um, that, that underperformance from the gross profit margin to an extent, so I'm a little bit happier. But I still have some concerns about rebates. I still have some concerns about um, about what's going on there. We budgeted for 346. Now, I've got a hunch that it, it may be some yearly rebates that, um, are, are being accrued for that we haven't posted yet. Um, we haven't received the check yet from my, um, my supplier. Now, I can drill in and, and see if there's particular suppliers in here or, or um, any information about that. Um, the, the regularity, and I can see in my general ledger, no, we just have one supplier rebate uh, general ledger code, so that's not telling me anything. Um, now, luckily, we're running Focus, um, we're actually also running a product called Focus Rebates, uh, which will help us get a better understanding of what's going on from a rebates perspective, um, and we'll end up forming a, an extra data feed into my Focus environment. So let's take a look at um, Focus Rebates quickly. So we've met lots of companies over the years. Uh, we've, we've worked with thousands of, of distributors and manufacturers, all of whom will have had some exposure to rebates at some point, whether it's paying out to their customers or receiving from their suppliers or both. Um, most of the companies that we've met will have a manual solution in place. Um, and that manual solution will typically be Excel-based. Uh, some companies will populate rebates informational rules into the ERP, but more often than not, we're seeing people running that in an Excel, series of Excel spreadsheets. Um, they can be complex, they can have complex formulas, they're easily broken, um, people can break links or change um, uh, formulas and, and end up with wrong results. Um, as a result, 
because of that, that complexity, they end up being very labor intensive. Quite often two or three resources within a business will be responsible for doing that. It takes a long time um, to run um, those rebate rules and, and process transactions and so on to, to work out what they should be claiming. The end result is, first of all, a um, set of rebate calculations uh, and claims to your suppliers that might not be accurate. So you might be leaving some money on the table. But the second thing is, you're only really running those, those rebate calculations when you have to. You're not doing it every day, every week, every month. So you, at the end of the quarter or the end of the year, you'll work out what you, you should be claiming and you'll claim it. That leaves you with a, quite a gap. Um, as we saw in our, um, our income statement a minute ago, quite a gap between what you expected to receive and what you actually received. Um, the solution that Focus have come up with, and, and we spent a long time developing this in conjunction with, with our customers, was Focus Rebate. Focus rebate is a system driven, not Excel spreadsheet driven um, rebate capturing tool. And what it allows you to do is capture the rules that, that drive um, the, the support and the help you get from your suppliers, um, whether it's growth uh, targets, whether it's straight dollar values, whether they're bracketed, and a system that allows you to capture and structure those rules um, in one place, visible, um, by anybody, not spread across loads of spreadsheets. Uh, that results in a very low touch, maintained, um, easily reviewed, and also very easily and simply run. So when you actually process your, your rebates to see, your, your transactions to see, well, we bought a million dollars worth of um, inventory this quarter, what rebates are we owed on that from our suppliers? Uh, it's one touch, it's a click, the processing and the calculations run. It's a very fast processing time, so you can do it um, in, in a matter of minutes um, to get those results back. And what you end up is with a much more accurate, much more transparent set of results, and you can run it as often as you like. So you can run it every week, every month, see what your, your rebate position is with, is with your uh, suppliers as you go through the year. So that's a description of what it is. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you it. So I've just got a couple of links here to go into my rebate uh, application. And I've got, first of all, um, this is my, my set of rules. So this is just my receivables. Um, I could have one for my payables, another project that looks at rebates that I pay. Um, you could also have what-if um, projects where you could actually say, well, I'm negotiating with a supplier at the moment to change our rebate. Um, structure with them. I want to push last year's transactions through this year's proposed um, structure and see how I would have made that. Um, so you can do what ifs. But this is a receivables, this is a live one. So what I'm looking at here are all the different rebate rules that we've got set up. And we've got everything from, as I said before, growth percentage to tiered percentages to um, fixed pricing or marketing support. Um, I'll just drop in and, and show you how those are set up just so you've got a feel for it. Uh, everything uh, has a, a series of, of categories. Um, you name it and put a good description in there. This one runs for a particular time period. It's for a specific supplier. Um, in there's no exclude any particular product or product line or category of products. Um, and then what you have is a bracket. In this case, it's just a, a straight uh, growth. It's based upon the, 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 the PO cost. It's looking at January year to date, and it's looking for uh, a growth above 5% will result in a 3% rebate. So anything over 5%, I get 3% on, which is fantastic. So, so that's something that's running um, throughout the year, in this case, um, and will be slowly but surely, once I get past that 5% growth, will surely but surely be uh, racking up some, some rebate dollars that I'm going to claim back. But I don't have any visibility of that in my, my income statement. Um, there are a whole bunch of others here. I'll just give you another quick example. Um, same thing for a specific supplier. In this case, though, there are brackets that show um, to and from brackets and the percentage that, that you would receive um, as a result. So all these role, rules are set up, um, a one-off set up up front. Um, and then what you do is you just, um, as you go through the year, you run calculations. So I would run the calculations against 
transactions that have happened so far this year. Uh, rebate claim should be so my percentage amount, the fixed amount, and the total. Okay. Now, what I can do here is I can just copy and paste out of here and, and use that as a, a basis for making claims with my suppliers. What I actually want to do is run this and then post it, and it will post those transactions back to a focused database where you can actually start to analyze what's going on from a rebate perspective. Um, so we've already done that. So what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to jump across into my dashboard that gives me an overview of what's coming on. Um, and I can see here, just at the very top level, some highlight figures here. I've got my total rebate for the year, 432,000. I've got unposted of 285. So we've, we've accumulated or earned these, but we haven't, we haven't uh, posted them yet. And then I've got $146,000 that we've, we've actually posted, which have actually been received from our, our suppliers. Um, I can see here a breakdown of, uh, in lots of different, whatever slices you want, really. I can see it this year versus last. I can see my rebates as a percentage of my total purchases. I can see those broken down by vendor. I can see them broken down by the month where we earn them. I can see them broken down by the, the frequency. I can see a huge, huge chunk here yearly, which is what I was expecting to see. I can even see it broken down by product lines as well. So if I said, well, for example, uh, I think my product mix has changed slightly this year. Uh, I've sold a lot more illumination than I expected to. Let me focus in on illumination. And now let me see what the rebate position looks like for just those illumination products. And I can see that, yes, there's a, there's a large chunk of um, unposted rebates just for illumination, which I spent a lot more on this year. So maybe that's affected my profitability um, and uh, left me with a, a gap in my, my P&L. Okay. So that's the rebates analysis tool. Now, what I actually can do now is if I said I want to look at these unposted rebates, I can even dive in. So we talked earlier on about drilling in. I can drill into the, the detail behind and see, in this case, what type of rebate I received, what was it based upon, what type of a, a, a rule was it. But I could also break it out by perhaps the supplier that, that we're going to claim that money from. Okay. So this is focused now. This is a slice and dice. Um, view, this is the, the grid view within focus, that allows me to look at my rebate information any which way I want. Um, and just bear in mind that this is rebate results combined with purchase values coming through from my, um, from my ERP. Okay. So we're blending sets of data together um, already. So that was rebates. Um, so we've talked a little bit um, earlier on about getting a, a view of your business, understanding your business better. Uh, what we're really after is a clearer picture of what's going on. Um, and here we have a, a jigsaw puzzle, and we've got, if you like, the standard here in white, the, the standard solutions, the, the basic information that you would be pulling across from your, your ERP. So we've added to that picture slightly by, by looking at budget coming in from Excel spreadsheets, looking at rebates coming in from the rebate, focus rebate solution. Um, but we may want to bring in some other information. Uh, we may want to look at data coming in from our CRM tool, Salesforce or um, Dynamics or whatever you're, you're running. We may want to look at what's going on on my website. How often are people visiting it? Which areas are of more interest? Which product pages are, uh, are being opened the most? I might want to look at incoming and outgoing phone calls coming from my telephone switch. I may even be looking at um, how much does it cost me to look after my customers, uh, how profitable are they. So putting all those together will give you a much clearer picture of what's going on in the business, and, and that's what we're going to do now. We're actually going to come down and take a look at uh, customer profitability. So this is the, uh, the, the focus grid. It's showing me a very straightforward view. Um, this is something that lots of our customers will, will look at every single day. They'll be looking at what each one of their customers is doing from a sales revenue point of view, from a cost of goods, from a gross margin and a gross margin percentage. And just in this view here, I can see that some, all, all customers were not, um, are not equal uh, in terms of both their contribution from a revenue point of view, but also their contribution from a profit point of view. I can see here, for example, uh, my number five customer brought in $33,000 worth of gross margin, even though they were my, my fifth biggest sales customer. My sixth biggest sales customer brought in more uh, gross margin, $52,000. So I'm getting some insight into 
how profitable my customers are. But this is just looking at cost of goods sold, gross margin. Uh, what I might want to do is take a deeper dive and, and understand more, more, uh, more what's involved with serving that customer, servicing that customer. How do they behave and how does that affect me? So I'm actually just going to go off and take a look. I just clicked on that customer ID now. And I'm opening up a customer scorecard for that one customer. So this is one of the features of Focus. You can drill through from uh, any uh, area in Focus to, to any dashboard, any scorecard uh, that you want. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a look at this scorecard. And it's actually showing me here. Um, I'm looking at my, my sales for this customer, my gross margin, my gross margin percentage, um, my year-to-date sales versus last year. And I'm looking at that compared to all my customers. So I'm doing a bit of benchmarking. If I scroll down a bit further, I can see how those sales and profitability figures are looking from a trend point of view. Um, and how does that compare to all my customers? Um, the one thing that is standing out for me here massively is my gross margin adjusted. It's in red. It's only 8.9%. It's lower than all my customers, my average across all my customers. And it's significantly lower than my gross margin for this customer. So what is that gross margin adjusted? Well, we're going to dive in and take a look. Um, so I'm just going to click on Analyze. And again, I'm going to dive into the underlying data here. And we're looking here just at that one customer, the gross margin percentage adjusted. Um, what is that? Well, it's made up of the actual gross margin, so the cost of goods taken off your sales. But then you're taking off your cost to serve. Um, and we have actually set up, and I'll, I'll do this uh, all in one go, but Focus, we've worked with some of our forward-thinking uh, customers. Uh, a few of those were, were in for users. Um, and what they've done is they've told us the main drivers of cost to serve within their business. And we've built out a framework um, that, that allows you then to, to plug in some business-specific rules. So, for example, you know, um, you know the kind of terms that you offer your customers. You know the, the, um, the cost of credit for you guys to extend credit to your, your customers. Therefore, things can be tweaked and uh, edited and, and weighted to match the way your business works. But what we can come up with essentially is based upon your customers AR performance and behavior we can come up with a, a cost to extend credit based upon how often they send products back and what type of products we can look at the return expenses likewise with delivery sales admin warehouse storage entertainment all of these uh, expenses that, that go into servicing a customer can be tied back to real figures within your business whether it's top cost of your sales force divided by the, the, the sales revenue, or whether it's the, um, the overall cost of your warehouse staff divided by the amount of um, uh, puts and um, picks and, and ships. Um, all of these can be uh, data, uh, are data-driven and rule-driven. And what they allow us to do is come up with a, a sales, a cost of goods, gross margin which takes off all of these expended um, or additional expenses to give a true cost to serve which is how we end up with a 8.9 percent gross margin now I'm looking at this for one customer let me just open up that right, to look at all my customers and I can see how all of my customers behave in terms of actual profitability uh, so I can sales revenue customer Actually, after we've taken into account all the cost to serves, they had a pretty pretty low gross margin to start with. But once we've taken the cost to serve into account, they actually cost us money to do business with. So we need to address that. We need to look at those guys and understand what's driving that um, by looking at the various expenses, but also looking at the, the prices we charge. And the, and the, the now, because this is focus, you can break it out by anything that's associated with uh, the, the sales cycle. So I could actually say, show me that broken, broken out by the sales reps. And perhaps you've got sales reps who are more profitable um, after cost of service taken into account than, than they perhaps appear in, in the first place. Um, so this is a really nice way of, of looking at it. We've worked with some customers already on this who've found that perhaps their top sales rep isn't contributing quite as much to the business as it, as it appears. And, and perhaps their second or third biggest after cost to serve in, uh, their top one. So perhaps they try and change behavior patterns within sales reps, or perhaps they try and change um, uh, pricing for particular customers. 
Okay. So once you've got all that information, it's only a small step after that to, to start to look at your customers and, and stratify them and understand how valuable are they to the business. Taking into account all these cost of serves, but also um, looking at product mixes. Um, what versus accessories, for example. Um, how often do they buy? Do they buy once a year, once a quarter? How long since they last bought? Do they, what's their average number of lines per order? How does that affect you? Are they doing ones and twosies um, every day or are they consolidating their orders to, to once a month and making it easy for you to interact with them? All of that allows you to come up with, uh, and again with some down here, so we've actually now, so we can now see we've got some opportunistic customers who come in and buy stuff from us um, perhaps just supplies uh, from us when we've got special offers on for them. We've got some marginal customers who could be improved uh, just by tweaking perhaps the way they interact or tweaking the margin that we get from them. Um, we've also got our core customers who are the ones we want to work with. That, that, that's how we want to do business. So, so they're behaving the way we want them to. So we want to perhaps do more with them and convert some more of these marginal customers over to be core customers if we can. Uh, and then we've got the, the ones that nobody wants, which is the service trained customers, the people that really end up um, either making you very little money or costing you money, but also who don't interact with you in a way that, that, that makes it beneficial. So I can now look at all of these customers and start to work through each one of them and either renegotiate terms with them or um, maybe even manage them out of the business to make the, the business uh, a smoother um, functioning uh, operation. Okay, so that's customer profitability. Um, so just to, to very quickly summarize what we've looked at so far, uh, we've seen a few different sets of data, info information, ERP data coming in, rebates, we've looked at data coming in from an Excel spreadsheet um, as well. Um, all of that's coming into our database designer tool um, and then being presented out as, uh, as analysis. So giving you better insight into your business, giving you better control over what's going on, making more timely uh, and more accurate decisions. Um, so we've looked at the end results um, of, of each one of these so far. What we haven't looked at, though, I've, I've mentioned CRM a few times, we haven't looked at CRM data in here. And this is a completely different set of information. So it's not looking at dollar value, it's not looking at, at um, actual revenue flowing through the ERP, it's looking at who am I interacting with, how often, um, what, potentially what quotes and bids do I have out there. Uh, so I've got this. Uh, set up. So I'm going to go straight in now and take a look at my my CRM analysis um, database. Um, this is showing me a very with their customers so different types of tasks. Whether they're entertaining, whether they're meeting them on site, whether they're providing a quote, sending out an email, or um, even making a phone call. So I can see that broken out by my, my, my users. This is just feeding straight in from the CRM tool. Um, I could just as easy though break it out by my customer and see which customers are, uh, we're spending the most time with. Um, now I'm looking here at rolling 12 months. I could if I wanted to show you this for last week. That might be my call activity report now for last week for my, for my sales managers. So this straight away is a really easy, uh, simple to manipulate and easy to understand view of, of what's going on within your, your sales team. How are they interacting with your customers? How are they doing in terms of closing out activities? If I just do a quick reset here and say, well, I want to look at all of my uh, completed or maybe even all of my open tasks. Um, and I want to break that out by user, pick maybe Anton and then see what activities have, have yet to be completed. So 32 quotes he hasn't done, um, 24 tasks. Um, and he's got two um, entertainment um, activities yet to happen. Uh, so all of this yet to be completed. So I, I've got a, a view of what's going on within my sales force. Do you know what might be really nice though? If I could do some of that blending, some of that bringing together of different sets of data that we talked about right at the start, I might be able to look at um, what the return on investment here. Um, so if I could see alongside my, my CRM activity the dollars that we've actually sold to this customer, I, I, I might get a better insight. 
So I'm actually going to do that. I'm going to go into design this database. So I'm actually just editing this, the, the design of this database in the tool I mentioned earlier on, database designer. Down the left-hand side, as I mentioned, customers, activity, users. Across the top, I have my measures, my properties, and my date. So I've got that CRM activity there. And in this square here, I've got that CRM data feed that's coming through from my CRM. What I've got here, though, are a list of all the sets of information that are coming to me, uh, whether it's uh, stuff that's coming in from my CRM tool, whether it's coming in from my, my finance, my, my general ledger, or whether it's coming in uh, from my sales data. So here I've got my sales and cost of goods broken out by customer. It's feeding that profitability database. So that's what I want to look at. So I'm just going to grab this and I'm just going to drag it across and add it as a new data stream. I do need to map this data in so it doesn't know where it belongs. So I'm actually going to grab the customer code and map it to the customer. Um, I want to look at my sales dollar, so I'm going to bring that in here as a measure. Um, and I need to put in here uh, a date. So I need my date mapped to the date field. And I just need to make sure that that date is in the right format. And in this case, uh, it's in, a, I think, a month, day, year format. Let's save that one off. Okay. Now, sales is useful. Um, I might want to see sales first, actually. It's more important to me. Uh, but what I actually want to see is the average sales per activity. So I'm going to create a new calculated field. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to call that sales divided by CRM activity. And I'm going to call that average sales dollars per activity. And I'm going to save that off. And again, that might be more or less important to me, so I might drag that up the chain. Then all I do is I build. Typically, most customers would schedule this to run on a regular basis. So that's how your feed from, from your uh, ERP might, might run. But I can just manually build this now. And because this is only a few thousand rows, it will only hopefully take a few seconds uh, to build. Uh, typically, though, when you're refreshing your sales or your general ledger databases, this may take um, take a bit longer. So you're talking millions of rows versus thousands of rows, so it takes longer to refresh. Um, but as I said, that can be scheduled, and it can be scheduled to run overnight when, uh, when no one's accessing the data. Um, so if I just go off and open up that, 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 that resulting database now, I'm now looking at exactly the same information as I had before, that CRM activity. But I've also now got the sales data and the average sales per activity, which I can now break out by customer. And I can see straight away which customers are bringing me in more revenue per interaction and which guys are bringing me in less. So these guys are uh, pretty needy for every interaction in my CRM system. I'm only earning $900. So perhaps I need to change the way we interact with them, spend a bit more time with these guys um, who tend to be a, a pretty good uh, ROI for my, uh, my sales team. Okay. So that was, uh, that's a run through of um, focus, um, the different sets of data that we can, we can pull in, how you combine different sets of data. Um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to uh, throw it open and see if there are any questions. Um, Andrea is monitoring the chat box now, so if, if there's any been asked, we can answer them now. Um, yeah, Jason, that's great. Thanks. Um, we have had a couple of come through, so I'm just going to cover all um, question is, I run Salesforce. Can I bring that in? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. So yes, I mean, the bottom line is Focus doesn't care what set of data come, you want to bring in. It doesn't matter if it's Salesforce or A and other CRM. Um, but with some of them, we have standard integrations, and Salesforce is one of those. So we've got a standard set of hooks into that CRM, uh, that, the CRM activity data in, in Salesforce. So that's not quite plug and play. It needs a bit of customization based upon how you're using Salesforce, but for sure we, we can bring uh, Salesforce data in no problem at all. Okay, great. Um, looks like we might have time for just one more question, and any um, questions we didn't get to will be sent um, via email in 48 hours. So the last question, Jason, how often is regular? Okay, so we're updating on, on a regular basis, good question. Um, so most customers, I would say most customers run uh, typically overnight each night, so every 24 hours. So your invoice run finishes, your backup uh, finishes, and then you go ahead and um, do the data pulls from your ERP and other systems. And then 
upload that into Focus and refresh it. Uh, we do have some customers, though, that have certain sets of data they need to refresh more often. So just as an example, one of our customers brings in AR data. Um, they actually get their, um, their credit controllers to, to use Focus to, to look at, work out who they address and what they speak to them about each day. Um, and as a result, they need that focus data to be much more up to date. So I think they run that, that particular AR feed um, every hour so that no one's chasing a, a customer that's already paid, that's already posted um, a check against a, an outstanding invoice. Great, thanks. Um, well, this now brings us to the conclusion of our webinar. Um, if you would like to learn more, please contact us. Um, I know we have a slide in here with some contact information. Um, and um, reach out to us. Yep, um, there it is. And, um, and we can schedule a personalized demo for your business and, and address any questions you might have there as it pertains to your um, exact instance of your data. Uh, so thanks for joining, everyone. Um, enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.